Today we're going to be taking a look at internationalization, a topic I don't know very much about, so I'm very excited to jump into this challenge. This one is Advent of View number 8 by Jessica Sachs. I know she's really into internationalization, which is why she's using it for this challenge, and she is a great developer and someone who I miss working with very much. There's a lot of requirements here, there's a big list of them here, so let's go ahead and jump straight into it. Basically the idea of the application is this. When you hit this button, it's going to cycle through this component. We're going to change the message to be in a different language. We're then going to localize the date time, which is more complex than you might expect. And then we're going to show the number of dates until Christmas. We're also going to show the correct flag for the current locale. This application has three built in, Japanese, German, and English, uh, but you are definitely encouraged to add your own language as well. Going to head over to the boilerplate code now and get started. If we have a look at the application, we have basically nothing. The first thing I'm going to start off by doing is creating a function to let me cycle through all of the locales. I'm going to make this one reusable, seems like a pretty useful composable to have in my toolkit, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to call this one use cycle. It is going to be generic and take a generic parameter, which is going to be a list of whatever you'd like to pass in. We're going to have this function or this composable do two things. It's going to have a function called next, which is going to increment the current value. If we're at the end of the list, we're going to loop around. We're also going to have a computed property called current, which is going to return the current value. The first thing we need is some way to keep track of that value. I'm just going to call it i, which is going to be a ref initialized at zero. The next thing we're going to need to do is have a function called next, and that's going to loop around. Let's go ahead and implement that one now. We're going to see if i.value is less than or equal to, or rather greater than or equal to the list dot length minus one. And if it is, we need to loop around. We're going to go ahead and say i.value is equal to o. Otherwise, we're not at the end, so we're just going to go ahead and increment that by 1. Finally, we need some way to get the current value, so let's go ahead and create a new computed property. We're going to call that one current, and it is going to be computed. We're just going to say list, and then return the current value, which is going to be i.value. Finally, let's go ahead and return all of the values, next and current. Let's go ahead now and give this one a test. We're going to create a new array called locales, and for now, let's just go ahead and throw in some numbers just to see if this one is working correctly. Finally, we're going to head down here and give it a try. We're going to need a button to increment this one. When we click it, we're just going to call next, and then we're also going to display the current value. I'm going to put that right here outside, and we're just going to say current. We are getting two errors here because we haven't actually used our composable, so let's go ahead and do that one now. I'm going to use my cycle composable with locales. We're going to grab out current and next. Finally, let's go ahead, save it off, and give it a try. You can see we have five, which is the first value. Now we have six, now we have seven, and fortunately we did everything correctly. We are back to the start. So far, everything is working correctly. Uh, I would like to talk about how we're going to test this one. Uh, I might do that one a little bit later on. Before we do that, we're going to go ahead and get our languages working correctly. So we're going to change this one from being an array of numbers to an array of locales. The key is going to be the current locale of which we have three. I'll just show you those, we have DE, E N and J A J P. So let's go ahead and pass these in. Going to start off with German. I might actually start off with English. <laughs> we'll then throw in Japanese, J A J P. And finally, we're going to end up with German. The other thing I'd like to have is the flag, which we currently don't have. Let's go ahead and have the flag as well. And I should be able to grab these from my emoji keyboard. We'll start off with good old American flag for English. Unfortunately, I didn't work. Let's go ahead and give it another try. Uh, what is going on? <laughs> okay. I guess I need to create the quotes first and then place my flag inside. Going to do exactly the same thing down here, not making the same mistake, throw in Japan. And finally, we're going to have Germany, so we're going to go ahead and say flag and throw in the German flag. I've missed a key up here, so let's go ahead and add that one as well. Finally, because this is generic, this should still be working just fine, no compilation errors, and we can still go ahead and cycle through those. We probably don't want to show the object here, we probably just want the flag. So I'm going to head back and fix that one up now by saying current.flag. Because we made it generic, we are getting the type inference here, which is pretty nice. Heading back to the browser, that should all be working just fine, and so it is. The next thing we're going to do is use some internationalization and translate this message correctly. I'll just show you how internationalization works really quickly, and then we'll go ahead and do it. Uh, this is the main file, which has everything set up. They're importing the messages for us, which is pretty nice. We then pass them in. And we have a few other things we're going to talk about in a moment. Just to show you how the message files look, they're over here inside of locales. And we just have a key value with all the different things we'd like to 
uh, be rendering. It is possible to make these dynamic, which we're going to talk about in a moment. But for now, we're just going to focus on happy holidays, which is going to be a static string. This is fairly easy to implement once you understand the i18n library, which is an incredibly large and complex library, uh, which can take a long time to really master. I'm just going to go ahead and show you the basics of it here. The first thing we need to do is go ahead and grab the current locale and the current messages. So I'm going to do that one down here by destructuring from use i18n. What we need to do is grab a function out called t, and this is going to handle all of the message interpolation for us. You can now jump down here and give it a try. I'm going to jump in, use my curly braces and say t, and pass in happy holidays, I believe is the correct string. There is a way to dynamically change the locale, and that should automatically handle, handle the re-render for us. Let's go ahead and give this one a try, and by default it is going to be in English. We're not updating the locale yet, so this is going to stay as a static string. So let's go ahead and fix that one now. We're already updating the locale by cycling through these. So all we need to do is watch current. When it changes, we're going to go ahead and update the locale, which is something else we can unpack from that composable. There's a few ways of doing this. I'm going to use watch effect, which is going to be triggered every time a reactive value inside of here changes. We need to make sure we're importing that one. It's not automatically importing for some reason. Uh, there we go. So what we need to do is just go ahead and update locale.value, which is a ref. I'm just going to say current.value.key. Every time this changes, watch effect is going to run and update my locale. Once locale is updated, uh, the i18n library is going to trigger this to update as well. Let's give it a try. Of course, it's currently in English. Uh, now it's in Japanese. And finally, it is in German. And we're back to the start. So everything is working correctly. Uh, that was fairly, fairly straightforward because this is just a static string. Before we do the final translation, we're going to implement the count, so show the number of days until Christmas. There are a bunch of different ways to do this. Uh, in a large production system, I'd recommend using a proper library like Luxon or something. Uh, in this case, we're going to see a really small and simple way to implement this. We already have a date here, and I happen to know if you subtract one date from the other, the result is going to be the number of milliseconds between the two. We can then go ahead and convert that into days. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and create a new number here called count. We're just going to say Christmas date minus new date. And that's going to default to right now. We are getting a type error here. What we need to do is go ahead and coerce this into a number just by putting plus in front of both of them. Uh, this is going to kind of trick JavaScript into coercing this into a number. And um, we're now going to get a number which is correct. Finally, we just need to divide this one by the number of milliseconds in days, which is going to be a thousand milliseconds in a second. And there's going to be 60 seconds in a minute and there's going to be, uh, sorry, that's actually the one wrong way around. This is a minute, this is 60 minutes an hour, and this is going to be 24 hours in a day. This should work correctly. Uh, finally, let's go ahead and render our count and make sure this is working correctly. Scrolling down here, we should get the correct count if we just go ahead and say count. Uh, one thing to note is this is not going to be dynamic. It's not computed or anything. This is going to be a static number. So you would not be able to use this application to count down. Uh, you'd have to continually refresh the page. A potential improvement would be making this computed so it updates dynamically. Uh, but I am pretty happy with this for now. What I'm not happy about is that long decimal. So let's go ahead and fix this up by just saying math.seal and rounding it up. We should get a nice round number now. I am getting 15th on the 10th of December, exactly what you would be expecting. If you'd like this to be more dynamic, you can consider uh, making this computed and then you'd have to update this automatically somehow as well. Either way, this is now working, and the final part of this puzzle is going to be implementing this string here. Let's go ahead now and do that. It's going to be fairly straightforward with this library. I'm going to show you how. First thing we're going to do is create a new div and attempt to just get this working. We're going to use t and take a look at our internationalization uh, files. We're going to start off with this one here, Christmas is coming. So I'm going to say t and pass in Christmas is coming. By default, we're going to get this part here. We're not passing in the date or time yet though. Uh, just to show you what happens, I'm going to save it off and head back to the browser. And we are getting is in. So if we're missing the, the numbers. There are a few different ways to implement this and I'm usually going to do it like this. To pass in these objects here, you just pass in an object of options and the values you'd like to interpolate. I'm going to go ahead and start off with either date or time. Let's start off with, let's say the time. I'm going to go ahead and pass in the time. What we'd like to pass in is the count. So there's a few ways we could try and do this. Something like count might work. Let's go ahead now and give it a try and just see what happens. We are getting 15, which is not quite correct. 
what we'd really like to do is show the correct number of uh, the units, which is going to be days in English and something different in Japanese and German. We do have that here, so it's going to be day. So we can actually nest these. I can say T and pass in day here, and that's hopefully going to give us the correct value. So we can actually do a nested translation inside of a translation. Save this off and give it a try. This is now working a bit better. We have 15 days, we have the uh, Japanese equivalent, and we also have the German equivalent. The last thing we need to do is pass in this string at the very start. Then we'll talk a little bit more about some more philosoph philosophical topics like testing. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. This has already been set up for us, which is very convenient inside of main.js. Uh, this library actually handles date times for us as well really nicely. See how we can do that. Uh, the first thing to do is just quickly refer to these again. I keep forgetting how this works. We need to pass in the date, which we're currently not doing. Just to give us a bit more screen real estate, I'm going to space this one out. We're going to attempt to pass in the date like this and just to see what happens. If we save it off and head back, this is of course not going to work. We're getting a static string, uh, not what you would expect. And we're saying no date found in Ian locale. We are doing this incorrectly. Uh, let me go ahead and just refer to the translations again. I keep on forgetting this, uh, not something I'm very familiar with. We need to make sure we're passing in date and time. I'm passing in time, but evidently date is not going to work correctly. I think we need to pass in something a little bit different. For example, the actual date. What I need to do is pass in that date I calculated earlier. Uh, that's going to be up here, Christmas date. Let's go ahead and see what happens if we pass this one in. I don't think this is going to work out of the box. <laughs> It's kind of working, but this is definitely not what we were expecting. What we really want is that nice formatted date. It took me quite a while to figure out how to do this because the documentation is uh, so huge for this library. We need to use D. This is a specific one designed for date times. T is only used for strings. If we head down here and use D and we can pass in our date. Uh, let's go ahead and now specify whether we'd like the short or long version. Just to clarify where this is coming from, I'm going to head over to main. Uh, it's referring to this date time here. We're going to have the locale, which is currently determined by the locale. We have short or long. I'm just going to go ahead and opt for the short version here. If I did everything correctly, this should hopefully be working. Uh, let's go ahead and head back to the browser. We're getting 25th of December 2022 in, is in 15 days. Uh, we're getting the Japanese equivalent, looks pretty good. We have the year, we have the month and the day. Uh, we have the particle and then we have the date. And the same thing for German. The challenge actually requires us to have the long version, so I'm going to go ahead and update that one now. And we are getting the long version now, and this is working correctly. And this does bring us to the end of the implementation. Uh, you can see I'm not exactly very fluent with this library yet. It is fairly large and complex, but if you ever work on any very large uh, international applications or ones that require multiple languages, uh, this library needs to be used. And there is a reason why it's so large and complex, because this stuff is really, really hard. We've barely scratched the surface of the API, but it was fairly seamless. We just basically use these helpers and everything more or less works out of the box. Uh, the final thing I'd like to talk a little bit about is how I would test this. Then we're going to take a look at the real solution from the author who is uh, much more familiar with this library than I am. Uh, so testing this is generally going to be not the most straightforward thing for a number of reasons. Uh, the first thing to talk about would be testing this composable. I generally like to extract my logic and separate it from my reactivity layer, so the incrementing logic from the reactivity, but uh, in this particular case, I don't think it makes very much sense. This use cycle composable is so straightforward, I think it's probably fine to just leave it as it is and test it using a component. In terms of testing the date time, it's a little bit more tricky because obviously this test is going to change depending on the current date time. What I would probably do is extract this into a separate component and pass Christmas date as well as the current date as props. And that would let me have more fine grained control over my data under tests. The final thing we're going to do is take a look at the actual solution, which is much more idiomatic. We're going to head into this GitHub repo under the solutions branch and look at app.view. So we used a kind of different syntax. In this example, they're using the i18nt component. And the reason this is a little bit better is it's much more powerful. If we have a look over here in my solution, I'm just using strings and that's all I can really do with this, pass t and d. If you want to use the components, you get a lot more flexibility because you're using templates and you can pass an entire component instead of just passing a single string. I used the key version, time and date. You can see that's these here. The equivalent in what I'm doing is date and time, which is just going to be that string. If you'd like to use a component, which you probably do if you have a sufficiently complex application, you can have things like changing the color of the text depending on the language. 
I wouldn't be surprised if different cultures had different uh, meanings attached to text or this sort of thing. And this is the reason internationalization is very hard. It is not just a problem of plugging in a language and changing it to another language. It's more a cultural problem. Uh, there's a lot of different nuances to it and you need to understand these things if you're building these large complex applications. So that is why they have this i 18 nt key. And I would definitely encourage you to check this out if this is something you are interested in. Either way, scrolling down here, there's one more little interesting thing I'd like to show you. I created my own composable, but you can see this is much more concise and simple because they're using a pre-built composable from Vue's core. Uh, it is good to use libraries where you can, especially very popular, well-maintained ones. So uh, it is definitely worth checking out the use cycle list composable from Vue's. Uh, the rest of the solution is fairly similar to what I implemented using the same uh, trick with the date time. Uh, but definitely worth checking out this for a more idiomatic way of building a localized library. That brings us to the end of this video and I will see you in the next one.